Welcome to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. Are you over 40 and tired of struggling with your weight, dieting, and constantly feeling like you're starting over with nutrition and fitness? Do you wish you had more energy? Do you want to lose weight and finally keep it off for good? I'm Lil, a certified nutrition coach and former registered nurse. I too have been there, and at the age of 44, I decided I was done with fad diets and chasing a lower number on the scale. I was so tired of constantly starting over and wondering why I couldn't get lasting results. I became a nutrition coach and created the Feel Your Best formula for women who want to build muscle, lose fat, and keep it off for good. If you're ready to build a better relationship with food, the scale, and your body, let's build your formula for feeling your best. If you're new here, make sure to check the episode details for the link to my newbie starter guide. You'll receive an email straight to your inbox with everything you need to start building your Feel Your Best formula. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's dive into today's episode. Hello, welcome to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. I'm Lil, and today we're talking about mindset and what is the real mindset work that needs to happen when you are truly making change. Because there's a lot of people out there giving you advice and telling you what mindset work you should be doing or what is the mindset that you need to have for success. And honestly, a lot of this advice is not helpful. And we're going to talk about how to really change your mindset in a way that is going to help you reach your goals. What shift do you really need to make for sustainable results? Because let me tell you, the absolute foundational piece of this is your mindset. So let's talk about it. When it comes to the Feel Your Best formula, the truly foundational piece is building a better relationship with food, right? Now, this is a little bit different than what you often see when it comes to diet and exercise advice or coaching, where you're just told, eat less, move more, here's your food plan, here's your workout plan, just do it. But if you're willing to take the time to build that foundation of a better relationship with food, it's going to put you light years ahead. It's going to make it so much easier to maintain your habits in weight loss when you finally stop fearing foods, stop avoiding foods, stop having an all in or all out mentality with food and truly embrace balance and what that looks like for you. I will also say your relationship with the scale is very closely intermingled with this. And that is why I teach that as part of my process as well. And I'm going to be honest, the vast majority of my clients don't even start a fat loss phase until we've been working together for months. And that is because they need to fix their relationship with food. And when you work with me, it's all about meeting you where you're at. You might be someone that needs months of focusing on the mindset work. It doesn't mean you sit there and just think. (laughs) You start nourishing your body. We start doing workouts that are going to move the needle for you and you do get physical results, but the priority is the mindset work and working on that relationship with food, the scale in your body. And my goal when you work with me is that this is going to be the last time you ever spend a dollar on figuring out what your fitness and nutrition needs look like. When my clients do move on from me, it's because they just know what they need to do. They feel like they're confident in what they're doing. They can do it on their own and they know they're never going to be tempted by fad diets ever again. And every single person is different. Some people stay on even past that point, just because they do want the extra accountability. And that's why I offer different levels of coaching to meet you where you're at. 
And most of my clients have done diet after diet after diet and always landed back in the same place, often gaining back more weight every time after they go through this diet cycle. And when they come to me, they're just so frustrated. And this is why we start with building a healthy relationship with food and that mindset work, because that's just key to getting to a place mentally and logistically where a fat loss phase is going to be successful and you're going to be able to maintain it. Most diets completely skip over this part of the process, and that's why the cycle of gaining and losing just continues on and on and on. And ultimately, it comes down to the mindset advice, the mindset work, and how that is addressed during this process of change. And if you do want to stop this vicious cycle, then you've got to have the patience to work on your mindset and relationship with food. And let's be honest, things have changed. The game has changed. There's a whole new form of fad dieting out there because now people are finding ways to take weight, these weight loss medications like Ozempic or Wigovi or Manjaro for purely aesthetic reasons. And they take these medications and they get, quote, results. I'm doing air quotes here because, yes, these drugs are going to suppress your appetite. Then you're going to eat less food. Remember, it's all about energy balance, calories in, calories out. And they're going to lose weight. But those results are not going to last once they come off the medications any more than any fad diet lasts once you stop doing the extreme diet plan, okay? And I want to make it clear, I fully support the medical use of weight loss drugs and anyone who has metabolic syndrome, diabetes, or other health conditions that do require it. So I'm specifically talking about the people who take these drugs just to lose 10, 20, 30, or even 40 pounds. And in my view, the blame really goes on the healthcare professionals who are out there prescribing these drugs because a lot of people are desperate to lose weight and they're going to want to do it. And it's up to the experts to really educate people on, you know, this probably isn't going to work for the long term unless you want to be on this drug for the rest of your life. And it's just going to be like any fad diet where as soon as you stop doing it, the weight's going to come back on. I think the numbers right now, last time I looked, were something like 90% of people who go on these drugs gain the weight back um, within the first few months. So This is just another form of fad dieting. And for those of us who aren't interested in doing that or aren't willing to do that, we're watching all these people get really, really skinny. But I think that we're kind of on the front end of this thing and it's going to take some time. But I mean, we're already kind of seeing the fallout with it, with people having health conditions and complications from taking it or taking it incorrectly, which can lead to a lot of problems because if it's being prescribed by someone who isn't the most ethical person, they're also not probably going to do a whole lot with education and support. Um, So I think we're kind of at the beginning, maybe middle of this fad, Um, not to say that it will go away completely, but I think we're going to start to see a lot of negative effects. And of course, we're going to start to see the people who stop taking it just gain the weight back, just like any other fad diet that's out there. And to be honest, a lot of people who, you know, especially if you're just trying to lose 10 pounds, you would be a lot better served taking that energy and just trying to gain five pounds of muscle and doing body recomposition isn't going to be that hard for you if you're just kind of chasing those last 10 pounds. So there really isn't a benefit of just losing weight rapidly from any form of fad dieting. And I felt like I had to include the medications because unfortunately, a lot of my clients are, you know, seeing that with their friends and, you know, people out in the world, and they're doing the hard work and working on their mindset. And it's very interesting because they get it. They understand like that is not the way. And even though I'm seeing the weight melt off, you know, my best friend, my sister, my cousin, whatever, um, I can kind of foresee the future for them that it's just going to be like any fad diet. So a fad diet, 
<laughs> let's just be clear here. What is that? It's when you jump all in, you follow a restrictive extreme plan. It's often overly complicated or has like a lot of rules just intended to get you to lose weight by eating less calories. And then you do it for a certain amount of time, whether it's 21 days, 30 days, 90 days, whatever, you ultimately get to a point where you hit a wall and you realize I can't keep doing this. This is just like not sustainable for the life that I live. And you stop doing it. And then because you're not empowered with the correct information and plan, the vicious cycle just starts all over again. The all in or all out, the weight starts coming back on. And Unfortunately, we can't quit food. We can't quit food like you can quit cigarettes or alcohol or other substances. We need food to survive. It's just the way it works. We cannot go without food. And this is why the most important piece of successful long-term fat loss is building that better relationship with food and mindset around food so that you can move forward in a way that is not a strain and stressful for you so that you can enjoy your day-to-day life and the food and the meals that you choose. And guess what? This is the harder work. Okay. And this is why I do require a 15 minute meeting with me with potential clients. We get on a Zoom call and we make sure that my method is right for you. And I have turned away potential clients because I can just see they just want to dive into weight loss and they're not ready to go through this process of building the better relationship with food. And if you are feeling anxious and frantic and desperate to lose weight, then you cannot approach the feel your best formula process with the open mindset that's required to go through that transformation. The fact is most weight loss solutions out there are preying on your desperation because when you're desperate, you'll agree to do just about anything. You're like, listen, I will stand on my head and um, dance the chicken dance if I can just lose these 20 pounds and they're going to promise you results and they're going to let you skip over the hard work, right? And they're going to say, oh, it's easy. Just cut out these foods, do these workouts, just follow this plan and you'll get results. And they'll pretend to help you with your mindset, but it is not the real mindset work that is required to actually create long-term change. As I've said many times, I do things differently. Things like helping you face your fear of the scale, not jumping right into weight loss, learning to nourish your body, focusing on adding in instead of restricting. And I also have you include your favorite foods right from the start, which is totally different from how 99% of weight loss and diet plans approach things. Fad diets skip over the real mindset work and you'll often hear things like this. If you want it bad enough, you'll do whatever it takes. You can have excuses or results, but you can't have both. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. If it isn't hard, it's not worth doing. So you get what I'm saying? Like in this vein of things where they're trying to tell you like, this is your mindset shift that you need to make. You need to realize that you can't have excuses and things like that. And it's really false mindset work because it's not really you changing your mindset. It's ultimately about forcing yourself to follow their plan without question, without so-called excuses, and prioritizing it above everything else in your life. And you're not doing the mindset work, right? Like if you feel like you can't do this and it's like, oh, I don't have the right mindset. I have a bad mindset. And this is absolute BS. And if you can tell I'm passionate about this, it's because I have been that person trying so hard to force myself to follow this plan that someone else made and then thinking there's something wrong with me because I guess I didn't want it bad enough because I wasn't willing to stick to my starvation diet on a holiday and things like that. In reality, this is what the real mindset work looks like. 
Number one, having the patience to learn how to nourish your body and really just understand how nutrition works in your body. You don't have to go and get a whole college degree or even get certified, but you can learn the basics. And It takes time and it's also about tracking your food and figuring out how you feel and putting in that effort rather than just being like, give me my meal plan, I'm going to slash my calories and let me just diet. Number two, you need to have the courage to get to the point where you can get on the scale every day just to be looking for the patterns and learning from it rather than thinking, oh, the scale is telling me I got fat or yay, I'm finally skinny. Number three, perseverance is so important because it's not going to be a straight line from where you are right now to where you want to go. There's going to be so many ups and downs, whether it's fluctuations in the scale or, you know, days where you miss a workout, it's not going to be perfect. And persevering through those times when you're letting that voice in your head tell you you messed up and you're not going to get results because you missed one workout and realizing that's completely untrue and reframing how to approach when things don't go the way that you would hope they would that is so important because you're you're always just learning a lesson when things don't go the way you want them to it's just a lesson to be learned so that you can move forward that is why i include the friday review and reset as something that i really think everyone could benefit including a friday review and re- reset in your life or a weekly review and reset and the perseverance piece of that is where you're really looking to just see what can I learn from the things that did not go my way. Additionally, you need to have the self-confidence or be willing to build the self-confidence to be part of the process and experiment with solutions. And we collaborate when we work together. It's a collaboration. It's not just me ordering you and saying to you, this is what you need to do. Like I said, I meet you where you're at and we go from there. And the entire process is about moving things in the right direction in a way that works for you. And then ultimately, finally, it's about taking ownership of your habits. That is the ultimate mindset work. That's where you want to be is where you are in the driver's seat. And that is where a lot of diet plans don't want you to be. They want to be in the driver's seat telling you what to do so that you think that they're the reason for your success, but they don't, of course, want to be blamed if things don't go the way you want it to. But when you understand your macros, when you understand what your day-to-day life looks like with the habits that move you towards your goals, that's you taking ownership. And ultimately, that's where we all want to end up. Real mindset work, this type of work is often avoided by diet culture. And instead, it's just people shouting at you that you need to do it their way. You need to figure it out. If you want it bad enough, you'll make it happen. You have to buy these certain foods, yada, yada, yada. And it is so disempowering compared to the real mindset work, which is so empowering for the long term. And it's about literally making a shift in who you are and who you become. And the fake mindset work is short term, where you can force yourself for a limited amount of time to follow those rules and be the person that does those things required of the complicated plan. So in the short term, you'll probably get results, but in the long term, it can have a very disempowering effect where if you can't stick with it, you feel like there's something wrong with you, that you're not disciplined enough, you didn't care enough, and it can actually erode your self-confidence. And that's, that's where I ended up as the story I've told, sitting there eating a plate of pasta, thinking that I'm bad and that it's going to make me fat and it's, it's shows that I'm not healthy just because I'm eating a plate of pasta one night when I'm supposed to be avoiding carbs at dinner. And a true mindset shift is an inside job. And my job as a coach is to help you make this shift. It's not my job to bark orders at you or force you to do things that are not going to work for you. 
there's just so much confusion, misinformation, and disempowerment in the wellness space, and I am refusing to be part of that. Doing the real mindset work and giving yourself the time needed to build a better relationship with food is definitely harder than following a cookie cutter plan, but it will pay off so much in the long run. All right, I hope you appreciated this discussion and it made you think about things a little bit differently, especially when it comes to your mindset. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will be back here next week with a new episode. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to check the episode details for my new listener starter guide and any additional resources mentioned in the episode can also be found in the show notes on my website. You can always find me on Instagram at Macros with Lil. And for more healthy lifestyle tips, recipes, and information on my one-to-one and group coaching services, make sure to check out my website. All the links can be found below. If you know someone else who is ready to start building their formula for feeling their best, please share the love and send them a link to the podcast. I hope you found today's episode helpful and I'll see you back here next week for a brand new one.